Welcome back everyone, my name is Stefan and this is the French Cooking Academy. So last week we've looked at the second specialist in the kitchen, that was the pastry chef. And we now know that there is of course the kitchen chef, the pastry chef, and today we're looking at the third player, a superb and very important role that he plays because he's responsible of all the snacking going on in France. If you want to find out more, keep on watching the video. Welcome back. So who is that third specialist from French cooking who has been hiding all this time? Well, if you've been in France, you may have noticed a shop called the charcuterie. The charcuterie in English means simply the shop, which is the small goods shop. And in France, we have one person dedicated to that and it's called the charcutier traiteur. The charcutier traiteur is the one that creates all these lovely pâtés, the rillettes, the terrines, the ham, the sausages, along with ready-made salads and sometimes warm meals. And this is what we use to snack in France. Huh? You don't go and buy a hot dog, you go to that charcuterie and you got this array of selections of small goods that you can pick and choose and then come back home, warm it up and you're just having a heck of a good time. <laughs> So today we're going to do a bit of a showcase with one of the classic French products from the charcuterie which is the roulé au fromage, hein, the uh, cheesy roll. In English the name doesn't sound great but let me describe it exactly. Basically the way it's made, uh, we're going to be using some baking tube like that and we're going to roll on it some puff pastry that we're going to pre-cook and when it's nice and golden we're going to fill this empty puff pastry tube with a mix of cheesy bechamel, with ham, with mushrooms, with anything you want. It is a French classic, it tastes absolutely delicious. And if you have not tried it, well, this is the time. Now making the French cheese rolls, hein, or roule au fromage, is quite simple, but you still need a few ingredients and tools when you want to make that recipe. Now I'll put all the details with the ingredients and dimensions of the uh, cookware I'm using in the video description, so don't worry, but this is just a rough guide. In terms of the cookware and, and tools, very important, silicone mat, piping bag, eh? uh, a large size uh, nozzle here, and most important, the baking tubes, metal hollow tube that you can buy in any shop. I'll try to put a link in the video description on how to get them. That's what we're going to need. And now to make the uh, hollow tube of puff pastry, this is really the important thing we need to know how to make. So I uh, start to unroll my puff pastry sheet and this is the baking tube I'm using. The one you may be using might be different in size and length and stuff like that. But usually what I do, I tend to just measure how wide that thing is, you know, on my a puff pastry sheet and try to aim for the same kind of length here as well in terms of where I'm going to cut but to start with you don't want to have this too long otherwise it's going to fall on the side so really just take just and start to make a cut with only the width of that tube and then we're going to start rolling it in. Now to roll the tube very easy uh, you take it a little bit there you start to push your pastry in here and you just roll and when you're almost done take a bit of egg wash and we're gonna seal just the inside there with some egg wash uh, to make sure it's gonna glue the whole thing together and boom you've got your tube next you take some more egg wash and you're just going to brush a little bit. Remember, this is the color you're going to have huh, on, your, on your tubes. And it's going to be nice. Huh? So make sure you put some things everywhere. And we're going to decorate and seal the whole lot. Now, before you decorate uh, that whole bit, you have to make sure, you see that seal here, even though it's going to stick, I like sometimes to just use my, my finger here to really kind of seal that a bit more firmly, just to make sure it's not going to unroll when we're gonna bake it huh? but that's about it and you can turn it over and then you can use a fork or a knife or anything you want and you can uh, make some decorations so some people do different things but you know you can just take like a fork for instance and just make some little very basic drawings on top now it's up to you to uh, to make whatever you want so i'm making some little cross shape like that and that's it. I'm going to reserve that in the tray, preheat my oven at 396 Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius uh, and continue making as many tubes as I can. My four rolls are ready. I've got only four baking tubes. I've reserved the rest of my uh, puff pastry in the fridge uh, for later and I'm going to do my first batch. Now, you can do an additional final uh, egg brushing at the top 
before you put these in the oven 200 degrees celsius for about 15 to 20 minutes and we're going to partly cook them like three quarters of the way eh? and to make sure we can still add the bechamel and warm them up afterwards so we're going to cook these and look at the result when they're done and now that the uh, rolls eh, are cooking it's the perfect time to start to make our roux because this is part of the time management and when you're waiting for something in the kitchen you try to do something else that fits in i've got 15 minutes here and it's perfect or long enough to start making a simple roux because we have to use it cold remember we're going to use a flavored milk that means a cold roux use with warm milk so the first step as always you take your butter and you melt it totally before we add the flour as soon as the butter has melted make sure you're on very low heat you eat, you add all the flour in and you mix well and you're gonna cook that mix of huh, flour plus butter for about one to two minutes maximum and that will make the roux remember the roux is a thickening agent made of equal amounts of butter and flour. When your roux is cooked for one or two minutes you turn the heat off and we're gonna leave this on the side of the stove to totally cool down before we add the milk. And so it is just in preparation for the bechamel sauce. The first batch of the uh, puff pastry rolls are out of the oven and at first sight they look really nice and appetizing. But unfortunately if you look a bit closer look what happened. You see? The tube totally went out of shape. This is almost done, but it didn't seal properly. And same thing here. So this has happened because that puff pastry from the shop, it's a puff pastry that seems to be puffing a lot. And the puff pastry is also very thin. Huh? So when this happened to you, what you, need to, what you need to do is tone down the puffing. So I'm gonna show you how to do that a little bit. And also we're gonna have to roll more pastry around to have more thickness to avoid that kind of thing. So happily, I've got that second part of the dough. This is always useful when you get something like this and we're going to give it another shot. Okay, so what do we need to do if we end up with a puff pastry that puffs too much and is very thin, like this is the case here. Well, the recommended thing apparently is to make little holes to avoid too much puffing. So we're going to go ahead and try that first. And we're going to go step by step, see how it goes. Yeah, so I've got the holes. I've made smaller bends so I can grab the edge here when I unmold them. And what we're going to do, we're going to turn that all around and I'm going to do a real large and thick roll to make sure we don't have the same thing again. And I'm going to cook it on its own to see what happens. So we're going to be able to experience a little bit and see what works best. Okay, so this one is done. I've made the decoration, I put the egg wash and I totally sealed the back here. And I'm going to put this in the oven as a test and see how we go with that one. Hey, would you look at that? I've tamed down the puff pastry Whish! with a whip. Well, actually a fork, but still, it is exactly what I wanted to see. So you see, if you have a puff pastry that does not behave, make sure to prick it with a fork, make little holes, and look at this. This roll is now perfect, as I can turn here, look at that. It's nicely cooked all over, and it's not too puffed, and this is exactly what we need to make our cheesy roll. We can now move on on making the bechamel. The next step on making our flavored bechamel is to warm up the milk and flavor it. So you start with all of the milk in a small pan on medium heat. And I'm gonna add uh, half a red onion with some cloves, two bay leaves, a little bit of salt because the cheese I'm gonna be using later on is very salty, so a tiny bit of that. A hint of black pepper, you can use white pepper if the, uh, the black grains bother you. And I'm putting some mushrooms as well in there. Last touch, a hint of cayenne pepper. And I'm gonna bring this to a simmer and leave it to simmer and that all the ingredients you know, diffuse their flavor in my milk for about 10 to 15 minutes maximum. My milk is now ready and I'm gonna filter it now over my cold roux. Remember, warm milk on cold roux. Eh? So I'm filtering everything at once because I just want to have the flavors. I don't want any of the bits. I'm just gonna add afterwards some ham. When this is in, 
heat on, medium, and slowly you're gonna whisk and incorporate the roux with the milk until it thickens. Very quickly, huh, your bechamel sauce is gonna thicken very much. And this is normal because today we are making a thick version of the bechamel because it has to stand in these hollow tubes. Huh? And so we're going to cook that bechamel for just a few minutes with a few, a few bubbles, a few boiling bubbles like that, a few volcanoes. And then we're going to turn the heat off and incorporate the cheese. After a few minutes, you add some cheese, so that's up to you. You don't want to overdo it, you can do 50 grams, but you start with a handful of cheese and you melt it in slowly. Now my mix was getting a little bit cold, so I turned the heat back on. And just to show you, that's what we need. Something nice and smooth. So now when it's warm again, I turn my heat off and I'm gonna add the final flavoring, which is the ham. Now, so you take some of the ham. Yeah. It's up to you to see again how much you put in. And you're gonna mix it in gently. Oh, ham and cheese bechamel is now ready and it's cooling down. And this is how it looks like. And I've just tasted it and oh my god, that Gruyere cheese, honestly, is absolutely beautiful. That nutty flavor of the, of the cheese. But what I really like is, is, you see these pieces of ham there? These little cubes, when you bite into one of those, it really brings that freshness that is really needed when you have that mix. Because it's a lot of cheese, but that little ham touch into there, I thought it was absolutely lovely. So I'm gonna leave this to cool down a bit more, put it in a piping bag, and then we're gonna dress up the rolls. And finally, dressing up the roll, this is the final part. And you're gonna use a plate with a little, uh, you know, layer of cheese on here and a second one uh, on the side, you'll see for what it's for. So basically when it's, uh, your bechamel is done and you got your piping bag, you take one of the, of the rolls, place it on the, as a bumper on there. And it's just a matter of taking your piping bag and filling as much as you can, not too much neither. Make sure it's nice and full. There we go. Okay, and when it's nice, like this, nice and full, you turn it around. And then we're gonna start doing the same on the other side if there's some bit missing. Fill it again, oops, sorry. And when it's full, this is when you can fill some cheese as well on either side. This is what we do in France. You take the cheese and basically try to fill it up in there. And basically, that's the cheese roll being ready to be cooked in the oven. Once you're done filling all of the rolls, this is basically what you get. And this is the typical French uh, roulé au fromage. Well, actually, this one is the uh, ham and cheese uh, roulé, uh, shall, I, shall I call it. Uh, the good thing with these snacks is that you can keep them like this before dinner party. Uh, and you just have to warm them up for 10 minutes at about 180 degrees Celsius, or maybe a bit less, just until the cheese melts. Huh? But you can definitely keep them like this beforehand. So it's a perfect kind of party food you can serve. Now to go further today, I'm gonna put one in the oven, melt it down, and then I'm gonna, gonna cut it open to finish the video and see how it looks inside. All right, so I've pre-cut one because I'm pretty bad always of cutting these things with my hands in the way. So I'll try to make a clearer shot. And this is it, basically the inside, as you can see, got that nice golden uh, layer of um, pure butter puff pastry. And inside huh, comes the ham and cheese bechamel. So there's a nice amount of both the pastry and the bechamel. So when you bite into it, you know, it's gonna really come out. It's very soft. Okay, that's mm, quite tempting actually to bite into that bite. But anyway, that concludes the video for the day, guys. Huh? These are the roulé au fromage, the famous French snack. And that's really brought back some memories from France. So thank you very much for following the video because it was really great. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. If you're not a patron of my Patreon page yet, you can do that, as it's really helped me all the time to make more and more videos. It's also helped me to have the channel to grow even further. But as for me, I will go now, I'll leave you with that lovely picture of the Rue Fromage, and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.